I'm Jasmine Anderson. First to Newsday, a surprise shakeup at the top of the Suffolk County Police Force. Commissioner Rodney Harrison will turn in his resignation letter to the county executive today. He spent nearly two years as Suffolk's top cop. His tenure included the arrest of the suspected Gilgo killer. Harrison telling Newsday last night he wants to give the new incoming county executive the freedom to select his own commissioner. Here's what he told us his plans were in a one-on-one -on -one at our studios back in August. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Uh, we'll see uh, who wins the, uh, the position of the next county executive. I'm not sure if they're going to reach out to me regarding potentially retaining me or not. But if not, then I'll, uh, I'll find something to do. Harrison telling us last night he has no immediate plans other than spending time with his family. He added he would work in policing again. The Mets have hired former NYPD Commissioner Keyshawn Sewell of Valley Stream. She will serve as senior vice president for the club and oversee security in the guest experience, according to team officials. A teen hit and killed by two cars in Suffolk, and now cops are searching for one of the drivers. Police say 15-year-old Amir Porterfield was crossing Sunrise Highway at a crosswalk in Copeg last night when he was hit. The first car that hit him stopped. A second vehicle hit him and kept going. This Hempstead man and a teen are now charged with killing a woman in Hempstead. Omar Berry and the unidentified 16-year-old boy are in court today. Police say they shot two women on Polk Avenue in April. One of them died. A guilty plea from a Riverhead man in connection to a string of deadly drug overdoses is a story you saw first in Newsday. The four deaths shocked the North Fork and Shelter Island in the summer of 2021. Yesterday, Marquise Douglas admitted to supplying the cocaine, crack, heroin and fentanyl that led to the deaths. He's facing 25 years to life in prison. Two other men have already pleaded guilty in connection with the overdose deaths. An unattended candle sparked the fire that ripped through a Freeport apartment building. Take a look. Fire officials say the Red Cross is helping the 32 people now displaced. No one was hurt here at the two-story building on Columbus Avenue last night. The building has been deemed unlivable due to smoke damage. Only in Newsday, toxic bacteria is threatening waterways across Long Island. Steve Langford takes a look at what's to blame. On a brisk and beautiful day along Big Fresh Pond in Southampton, Greg Griffin enjoys his daily walk with Casey, aware that some freshwater lakes and ponds in the South Fork of Long Island are now plagued with blue-green algae, which can prove fatal to wildlife and dogs. It's a serious problem. Griffin says he's relieved that unlike more than two dozen freshwater bodies afflicted with toxic bacteria, Big Fresh Pond is clean. You know, the map is really showing us where the areas are sewered and not sewered. Dr. Christopher Gobler, the School of Marine and Atmospheric Sciences at Stony Brook, says overall last summer was the worst on record for harmful algae blooms in Long Island waters. Kind of unprecedented with regards to the number of events and the diversity of events. Five separate areas across Long Island closed to shell fishing, a longer period of red tide, and warmer water temperatures, all against a stubborn backdrop of septic systems across the island, more than 400,000 in all, mostly in Suffolk County. We've got to have you know, comprehensive plans in place for those upgrades and for funding. And the lab has identified some harmful algae never before found here on Long Island that can lead to the kind of bizarre and aggressive behavior birds exhibited in Alfred Hitchcock's classic horror film. We did not see that here, but that is the origin for the movie The Birds. Dr. Gobler says the EPA released a study showing that home values are intimately linked to water quality. Water is a way of life here in Long Island, and decisions need to be made about what we value and what we want the future to look like. Treasure Island. Steve Langford for Newsday TV. Read more about the health of our waterways on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Election Day is Tuesday, and the Suffolk County elections officials are predicting on-time results. Connectivity issues pushed the release of results until after midnight last year. The Suffolk Board of Elections Commissioner tells Newsday the county completed security and software upgrades in August and says the system appears to be working properly. The biggest race in Suffolk is for county executive, and you can watch the debate between the two candidates on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Another sign of the season in New York City.
name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As we as a city New York Archbishop Cardinal Timothy Dolan taking part in the annual Radio City Christmas Spectacular Blessing of the Animals yesterday. Dolan was on the hand as camels and sheep walked into the famed music hall. The Rockettes were also there. There is this essence of tradition. Every rockette that has graced the stage has done the wooden soldier number, but also there's something new every year. And so when audience members come back with their families year after year, they get to see something different, something that adds to the magic. The Christmas Spectacular begins its run November 17th. I'll have a blue Christmas without you. That's a new version of Elvis Presley's classic Blue Christmas. It's a duet with country singer Kane Brown. It features previously recorded vocals by the late artist who made the song famous in 1957. Checking out your hyper-local Friday forecast, another cold start, but we're warming up for the weekend, and it's not going to rain. Sunny today, highs around 54 degrees. Tonight, lows in the 40s. Tomorrow, here comes the warmer weather, highs around 61 degrees. A look at your seven-day forecast coming up. Long Island weather is brought to you by Home Tax Saver, PTRC Incorporated. Ally votes political corruption is top of mind in the town of Oyster Bay. Macy Eglund and Ted Phillips have the story you'll see only in Newsday. We are here at Theodore Roosevelt Memorial Park in Oyster Bay with Newsday's Town of Oyster Bay reporter Ted Phillips. We've been going town to town, highlighting different issues residents are focused on. And here in Oyster Bay, Ted, we know they've unfortunately had some issues with town leaders in the past. So what are residents here telling you? Well, the town has had some problems in the past, but it was supposed to be turning around in 2019. The town board appointed a, a inspector general, Brian Noon, but he stepped down in June after reports came out that he had uh, approved the contract for a business associate of his. Today, the district attorney's office is investigating this to see if there was any criminality. We don't know where that's going to lead. We are here on the waterfront. We know shell fishing is big here in Oyster Bay. What's the latest on that? Well, the town for decades had a long-term lease leases with uh, one company, Frank and Flowers and Sons, and they dominated the shell fishing in Oyster Bay Harbor right back here. The town has indicated that when that the latest lease expires next year, that they don't want to, to go that route. They want to actually split up into smaller leases with multiple companies so that one company doesn't dominate the, the harbor and the shell fishing industry here. We do know one good thing about the town of Oyster Bay right now is they're doing pretty well financially. Well, financially, they've improved a lot. In 2015, that was kind of the low point for them. Uh, it's been improving ever since. So a big part of the improvement has been the result of a tax increase in 2016. The town did scale that back a little bit, but they have been, for years now, they've been taking in more money than they actually need to run the government. And that has allowed them to generate large surpluses, uh, but also to increase salaries of town employees. Could we potentially be looking at a tax cut here for these residents? Well, there's at least one town board candidate who would like to cut taxes next year. Okay, we'll, take, we'll keep an eye on it. Thank you, Ted. Thank you. Read more about the issues in Oyster Bay and what matters in your town on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Feed Me is brought to you by PC Richard and Son. From Japanese Doritos to Chinese white peach oolong Oreos, one local store is selling some rare eats. Newsday's Scott Vogel has a look at exotic snacks in today's Feed Me TV. Okay, it's decision time. Which is it going to be? The collection of exotic snacks from around the world on the table? Or what's inside this mystery box? I'll take the box. 
Exotic Snacks Long Island is a two-year-old company whose owner surfs the internet daily for crazy snacks from all around the world. Wow, there's a lot of stuff in here. Among the site's most popular products are mystery boxes filled with, well, it's a mystery. Ketchup flavored Lay's. Exactly like you thought it would taste. So these are sandwich cookies made by Icy. They smell and taste exactly like an Icy. They even have the kind of fizziness. I mean, no reason, but not bad. And each treat is like a mini trip to a faraway land. These are Chinese Oreos. Japan. I'm eating eels at Skiji Market in Tokyo. Thailand. Happy Hour, Go Go Girls, and, you know, the Reclining Buddha. Detroit. Crumbling infrastructure, but cheap housing. The snacks are sold at a store in East Islip, as well as on the Exotic Snacks website. Shrimp Doritos? <laughs> I want you to smell this. It doesn't taste as bad as it smells. <laughs> okay, wait. <laughs> <laughs> These are potato sticks. The chocolate banana sauce on them. Is that not what you've been waiting for your whole life? Now these are chips that were created by Exotic Snacks in honor of the rapper Big Pun. I don't know his music, but I like his chips. I wouldn't mind being on my own chips. Salty, sweet, salty, sweet, salty, sweet. These are Fruit Loops. They're cereal straws. Bubblegum flavored soda. See, my mind is racing right now. These are Panda flavored. Peppa Pig gummy. You know, I'm just about to hit the wall and I'm just gonna crash really hard, I can tell. Solution, more cotton candy soda. Give it a try. For more on exotic snacks, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Newsday has complete coverage of the races affecting Long Island with regular updates from Newsday TV's state-of-the-art studio and interactive voter's guide to all races in Nassau and Suffolk counties. Your source for election coverage is newsday.com slash livos. I'm Jasmine Anderson. Thank you so much for watching on this Friday. We'll leave you with a look at your hyperlocal seven-day forecast.